All right, folks, the very, very end of this video has awesome videos of microscopic creatures. Stay tuned. I know it's long. Hello, this is Tom from anti-poton.com, and today I want to talk to you about water bears, otherwise known as tardigrades. They're tiny little critters, specific, specifically they're micrometazoans. Let me actually show you the container I got with them. Here it is. Yay, from Carolina Biological. The top's off so they can uh, respirate a little. You get some dissolved air into the water. They're sort of microscopic. You can't see them with the camera. The largest size they're ever going to get is maybe a, 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 a millimeter, and that's, that's kind of pushing it, actually. They're going to be much smaller than that, most likely. And we're going to look at them in just a minute under the microscope. Uh, they're incredible little tiny critters. They're, they're multicellular. That means they have lots and lots of cells. You and I are also multicellular, but it, where the average human has maybe 100 trillion cells, <clears throat> their cells, well, significantly less. I'm not actually sure of the number off the top of my head, but I would assume it would be in the multi-thousand range at the most. <clears throat> Excuse me. The um, tardigrade has eight little legs, four little toes in each leg, two eyes, a gastrointestinal system, sort of like a nervous system, and it lays eggs. It has a male and female sex, and it even molts. And yet here's the neat part. It's as small as a single-celled life form. Remember those amoebas I was showing you beforehand? Just like that, only it looks like a little bear, sort of. And it kind of like waddles along, and that's where it gets the term. So we're going we're gonna to make some samples really quickly. I'm going to show you how, how I set the cultures up. And then after you're done seeing that, I will show you the tardigrades, which is probably what you actually want to see. So if you are really, really bored and you can't take it or whatever, just kind of skip ahead. But if you can, it might be fun to see how the samples are put together. Uh, first off, I don't have my rings on like I usually do. I usually have my college ring on this hand and my uh, marital ring on this hand. But not today. The reason is because we like to put gloves on. Now, realistically speaking, these are non-parasitic, non-toxic, non-dangerous. You could probably drink the sample and be safe. Although, of course, I obviously don't advise doing that. But um, it's always a smart idea when working in the lab to put on precautions. And all, for all of you folks that like to always give me a lot of grief about that, shut up! Proper precautions are part of lab work. If you don't like it, then get out of doing anything with laboratory work. Of course, obviously, this is an amateur laboratory. And uh, first off, these gloves need to be tossed. I hate these things. These are these vinyl gloves I bought. They're absolutely useless. You can barely get them on. If you don't have an allergy to latex, I recommend using latex. These things are useless. I mean, they work for what they're supposed to do, but they're just god-awful hard to get on. can't stand them. Anyway, um... Let's look down here at part of my lab. Uh, I just got a bunch of new stuff from uh, from um, Carolina Biological. I order lots of lab equipment from uh, from Carolina Biological and from uh, UnitedNuclear.com. I'll put links to them and everything up so you can see them. Uh, I just got these. Oops, whole bunch of new petri dishes. You guys have seen my petri dishes that I normally use. Well, these are brand new Pyrex. Look at that, made in Germany. And let, it, let us all just agree, hopefully we agree, that when it says made in Germany, it's usually pretty awesome. There was a time when made in Japan used to be considered crap, and now made in Japan is usually considered good. I think it's still considered good. I know made in Germany is usually pretty good, too. So, I love these new Pyrex ones. They're so, 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 so nice. Oh, and I got a bunch of new, um, bunch of new beakers, too. See, there's a little... Oops, turn it so you can see it. Nice Pyrex beaker. Real boron silicate Pyrex. The only proper thing to use. Because a lot of my other ones are, like this guy, for example, which appears in lots of videos from United Nuclear. Well, it's sort of, it's borosilicate too, so it's also good. But it's stuck in the middle of an odd experiment right this moment, so it's not really any good. And my, um, I have a dish over here where I keep stuff that needs to be taken and autoclaved. Um, this is one of my other older ones that needs to be super washed. But regardless. Alright, so first off, um, let me point this down here. I recommend, uh, i got enough sample containers here to fill a truck. And pipettes. Let me tell you something. Clean pipettes are great. Here's a hundred pack of them. Awesome. Always keep clean pipettes. Now, let me kind of move my camera over. This is sort of an informal video. I'm not doing as great of a job as I normally try to do. That's, of course, assuming I do a great job. I may do a sucky job. Who knows? I think I do an okay job. Let's see. Um, I have a dish here, and I have everything I'm going to work with in this dish for the most part. And I do this partially to keep everything clean. 
but it also um, makes it easier for spills because if you noticed, let me point it over there, my Geiger counter is connected to radio, uh, radiationnetwork.com right there. And so I have to be mindful of that because I can't bring anything over here that's radioactive or it would affect the readings, which I don't think I've ever done before, but um, I, I do have dosimeters in my room and radiation detectors and sort of a portal monitor going, so I'm reasonably good and sure that that's not going to happen. Okay, each of these two beakers contains plus or minus about 140 um, milliliters of um, water. This is uh, a, a, basically this is distilled water, reverse osmosis and um, and evaporation were both used on it, and then it, you can buy it at the store like that. And then I, I boiled it in the microwave, which is a neat way to kill the bacteria and nasties inside of it. You can nuke this for a couple minutes and boron silicate like this Pyrex here can actually take being nuked like that without blowing up. All the other crappy stuff you can buy will blow up, of course, obviously. You don't want fake Pyrex. Cause if, you go, if you go to the store and you see something that says Pyrex, the stuff that you buy at the store is usually has kind of a green tinge to it when you look at it. That's, that's, it says Pyrex, but it's not real Pyrex. It's actually uh, something called soda lime glasses. Total crap. Okay, we're going to grow two cultures. I've washed both of my Petri dishes. Let me remove the lids. I like to wash everything extensively, and I like to boil everything, or even kind of, I have kind of a makeshift autoclave, and that's a good thing to do, because that way you don't introduce things you don't want. Now we're going to um, fill these little Petri dishes here, about halfway full of this water. Let me see what the temperature of the water is. The water's kind of still a little warm, so I might want to let it cool just a little bit more. Looks like we didn't need all the waters. Maybe, maybe a little more than halfway, because I have to take into account that there will be some evaporation. There we go. That should be right. Okay. Now, next off, uh, labeling is sort of important. I have a box of labels, and I write out labels for everything. Very, very, very important. Uh, let's see. Water bear A. That will go on top of this guy right here. Oops. I like to stick a little bit of it open on the edge so I can get it off again. And it has the date and what it is. Water bear B. Always make two, at least. I mean, you make 20 if you want. But at least two, because if something happens, what if you get your sample and it falls over on the floor and smashes or something? And then you're out of luck. Sucks to be you. And that's no fun. Okay. Now, Let's get ourselves a clean pipette. You'll see my head now in the way. Here's a clean pipette. And we will... We're even going to label our pipettes, because that's also important, too. And this is Water Bear A. And this is Water Bear B. Yeah, it's a little over the top, but you know, whatever. It's a, it's good, it's good practice. At a, at a minimum, it's it's good to keep yourself doing things correctly. At a maximum, it actually is beneficial. There are benefits to doing this. If you mix these up, for example, you could introduce like a another random sample that you have into this, and that's no good. And they haven't done anything yet, so they can touch right now because they, they haven't done anything yet. Let me stop for one second and show you a really really neat deal. Um, I buy. Oops, there goes a pipe in. I buy nice cover slides and sample slides and stuff like that. I buy like the good ones. Here's some well ones, for example. Nice big boxes. But if you're ever in a pinch, if you're in the United States and you're and and you're, you you ha if you have a Hobby Lobby nearby you and it's kind of like a hobby shop. If you've ever seen that one, for three bucks they sell a pack of slides and microscope sample uh, microscopes. Um, sorry, microscope slides and cover sheets. And they're actually really nice. I mean, I don't know, they're probably not super professional quality or anything, but they're really, really nice. For three three bucks, it's like three fifty or something. Let's just call it four bucks after taxes and everything. I mean, really, you get those little case and everything, that's a deal. I was actually really impressed by that. Really impressed. Okay, now, um, we're going to stop the video for just a second and let these cool all the way, and then... We'll make some slides and see what's on them. All right, folks, let me show you um, the inoculation now. Um, I've had given this enough time to, to, to cool, 
and I'll talk in a few. Uh, I'll talk while I'm showing you the slides on the microscope. So you're saying something cool at the same time you listen to me babble. Um, I'll talk to you about how the um, tardigrade is capable of surviving mega super low temperatures and incredibly high temperatures and even the vacuum of space and 100 years without water and all that sort of neat stuff they can do. But before I do that, first off, this is fake Pyrex, of course, that crappy soda lime. I use these guys right here to get pond water, rain water, whatnot, and I often do this for my testing looking for radioactive isotopes in the rain, which I have actually found. But um, this time I was doing it to grow organic stuff. There it is. It's basically pond scum, and I've looked it over. There's a weird mixture of um, single-celled critters that live in this. The reason I'm going to add these is they're going to provide some of the fuel for the um, tardigrades to live. They're going to be some of the food that they eat. Some tardigrades, of course, eat meat, so to speak. They don't eat meat. They, they suck the cytoplasm out of other creatures. Um, but a lot of them just eat plant material. So without further ado, let me hook the camera up. And give me a second here. Put this into place. Let's point this down, and I'll show you what I do. All right. First and foremost, I go to each one of these guys and I squeeze my pipette. And I'm going to just kind of grab some of the material all the way down to the bottom. I've got about a little bit of a pipette there. Not very much. Anyway, I will now add that to the solution universally. That's one. I'll do it again, try not to get too much debris. That's two. And then one more. Three. Oh, look at that, I shot that in too fast. Do it again. I'm doing this a little faster than I probably should, but you know, whatever. Now, okay, so we have these guys together. <clears throat> if these were carniv carnivorous critters, so to speak, it's kind of an odd term but uh, for these small things, but if they were, what I would do is I would boil about two to three granules of wheat, cool the wheat, and then drop the wheat inside here. The wheat granules will provide the food that the single cell life forms need in order to survive. All right, so now we have a little bit of a um, environment for them. Now they'll they'll eat the um, uh, uh, green sort of stuff that's in the water here, uh, various uh, diatoms and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm not actually sure how they'll do eating that, and I might actually have to get some algae and put that in there because one of their primary diets is supposed to be algae, which sort of it's not quite exactly the same way the uh, diatom works, but close enough. Okay. So we'll take this, that's pond water. Okay, see, they already, they already would have gotten mixed up right there if I hadn't labeled them. And let me kind of move this out of the way. And in fact, I'll shut the top on this, but I won't leave it shut for very long because you don't want to kill them. The stuff in here does actually drink, I mean drink, does actually uh, 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 need air and needs to get air. You can take your uh, uh, water, little water pipettes here, you can actually stick them in the water and kind of blow air bubbles through the water is a way to, it's kind of like a fish tank, it gives them the same kind of effect. You do the same thing to this one. Okay, now the tardy grades. Let's add them. Squeeze this down a little, go on in, grab some from the bottom then go up, and then add them here. Do it again. And then add them in here. Now that probably gave us tardy grades. I'm going to move these aside for now, put their tops on them, and I'm going to use the primary uh, dish here from Carolina Biological to seed my um, slides to make sure I get a tardy grade to look at. Then I'll put the, what's re le left of it inside of these um, uh, dishes here to grow. So let's put these aside and let's make ourselves a quick sample. What we'll do to start with is we'll grab a um, is that kind of, okay. We'll grab a, uh, a well slide. If you can see that or not, it has a kind of a dip in it, and the well slide is useful, well because it has a well in it. So let's prepare this. 
Go down here to the bottom. Can you see that? Yeah. Go to the very, very bottom. Grab a little bit off the bottom. Put a drop or two, or three. I leave some water in this so that I can put it back in here if I need to. Let's put this down and let's uh, prepare the microscope. Hey folks, um, here we are looking for our very first tardigrade and there it is right there. We are actually at I believe 100 times magnification right this moment. That's 10x IP, uh, sorry, 10x eyepiece and 10x subjective. There it is. Look at it go. These things are actually hard to see. We're actually using a well slide right this moment. I, I actually switched a little bit later to a flat slide, but the well slide was kind of neat initially to get a kind of a scope and a feel for the creature, and it's very fast. As you can see, it's very, very difficult to actually you know, keep up with this goofy thing. Now, I've, I've chased around really fast ciliates and stuff before, so it's not that hard, and you see its little feet are kind of playing at the water because it's really supposed to be settling to the bottom of the slide, which I guess it would eventually do, and then kind of wandering around, sort of like an amoeba does. And it's kind of stuck out here floating in three dimensions, and it's not too happy about it. But it's still a pain to keep up with it. The other problem is that it's kind of a thick creature, so at this magnification, it's actually hard to keep focused on it. And look, you can see a little playful ciliate go by. In fact, actually, if you look, you can see all kinds of crazy stuff. Here it is under Darkscape, sort of like a makeshift ghetto Darkscape I made. I did this by uh, flipping the um, apertures underneath the uh, slide. that have They have various little sized holes that the light goes through, and I kind of switched in between two of them so it became dark, and then blasted it with an LED from the side. And as you can see, it's kind of neat. You can see the actual skin on the top, sort of. And you, because the light's coming in sideways, and if you look, you can see it's actually really rough. Look in the top of the skin, you can actually see how rough it is. It's very interesting. So normally you see completely through them, but now you can see the little bunches. I wonder if the, 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 the bulgy things you see, not inside, but in the outside, I wonder if those are the actual cells. I know this is a multicellular life form, but the question is how big is a cell for each one of these things? And I can't believe that each cell would be too big. But anyway, so now we are blasting it with all sorts of light from below, and you can see straight through it. Look at that. Again, just looking at it makes you think that each one of those little microscopic dots might be like a nucleus or something, and maybe it's a multicellular life form that's not really that complex. The uh, water bear is a neat little creature. Look at that. Look at that. Its entire stomach is, or its entire inside is mostly dominated by a very, very large gastrointestinal tract. You can't tell if this one's male or female. Not really. That would be in the back legs. And of course I can't get a good view of those, and I'm not sure I could sex the thing anyway. Okay. So we zoom in closer. Now at this point I'm at, I think, 200x mag magnification? Actually this might have been 400x magnification. Trying to set if I my magnifications off a little bit. As you can see, this is impractical. It's neat. You get really good views, but the the, the dumb thing is just too fast. So I, I probably should get some of that slow down chemical that slows them down. But that seems to work better on ciliates. I'm not sure what'll work on this guy. And there it is walking around. It actually give you a good view about how it walks. It walks better when it's on the ground. It has eight little legs. So look at it go. It's kind it's kind of cute looks a little bit like a bear and if you look at its feet you see they are actually claws it's sort of weird now actually these things actually produce eggs inside of their bodies and then they molt and they pop out of the top of their um a uh, little it's not really an exoskeleton exactly a little casing around their outside and they grow a new one and swim off and leave the eggs behind inside of the casing I actually found one a casing that had an egg in it and let me show it to you in just a second I was actually quite impressed. I the the tardigrade actually thought that the casing was. I think I think this is what it, what happened. I think it thinks that it was actually a living one. I think it tried to mate with it. So I think that this is like a um, freaky sex scene coming up here. All right, freaky sex scene. First, we start with the tardigrade, and there's the shell of a tardigrade. No tardigrade inside. And you notice that's an egg inside of it. And if you see, it's using its back legs to try to join up because the back legs are actually where the sex organs are in these things. And if you look, 
I mean, I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe I have like a perverted protozo in mind, you know, but um, I swear it looks like it's trying to get a little action. And that's kind of weird, but whatever. It obviously gives up in a couple of moments. This is a shell. This thing doesn't really have a brain, so... Hmm. That's pretty much how it would do it, I think. So anyway, it, it swims off for greener pastures. And though it uses the back legs to get a hold of whatever's there, we look back at it in a moment, and you see it's not really using the back legs too much, so... The behavior when it's in the squishy, mushy stuff is a bit different than when it was by the tardigrade shell. Notice that? I swear that is an egg. In fact, I'm 99% sure of it while looking at my tardigrade manual. So we're going to zoom in on it and take a good look at it. And then I actually did a time-lapse video of it coming up in just a few seconds. And if you look closely, you'll see this stuff on the inside is moving. And I think what we're watching here is the development of life. We're watching a tardigrade come to life. By the way, they're the claws. They're not little cutesy feet, they're actually sharp, vicious, tardigrade water bear claws, which for which it uses to uh, dig through greeny algae, and it'll actually eat up other um, other ciliates and so on. It can. There's even one specific species of it that actually eats other uh, uh, micrometazoans, like this one. Yeah, this is a metazoan, in case you're curious. Neat! But anyway... There's that egg thing, and I swear, even in real time, I mean, on normal real time, it's moving inside. There's, like, stuff moving. So here's my time lapse where I think I got a better view of it moving. Take a look at this. It's moving. What is that? I say the beginning of life. I say it's an egg. I also say that I have no degree in biology, so whatever I say means nothing. But if you do have a degree in biology, perhaps you can look at this and say, is that actually life that we're seeing? In other words, are we seeing the formation of life? Of course, the stupid thing's alive. Things that move by themselves are typically, not always, typically alive. Especially in this sort of context. But anyhow, that's a wrap. Oh, yeah, and um, back to me. All right, so that is a water bear. And uh, before I go, I have uh, uh, two more things that I think are really, really interesting. First off, I wanted to say, um, if you decide to buy any uh, uh, little critters like uh, single-cell life forms or something, uh, I'm really actually, I really actually think Carolina Biological is a great place to do uh, business. They're cheap, like 10, 15 bucks for a sample. They come in the mail, two-day mail, and you drop them right in your microscope. Even a little kid's microscope will work for a lot of them, and for the most part, they're all quite safe. You, you know, could like drink the samples, so to speak. I mean, you would never do that. That would be idiocy. But the point of the matter is nothing would probably happen to you. And so you don't have to take all the precautions I do. And you don't have to use all this crazy lab equipment that I use. You can use like plastic Tupperware for it if you want to. I mean, you obviously won't do as well as high quality, you know, science equipment and, you know, stains for the critters and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, whatever. You can do whatever you want. Also, they send out things like they give you um, this little booklet right here. comes with every single single-celled single critter that you buy. It's quite nice. They just give you this little book of this, chucked it in for free, telling you how to do everything. Uh, they even give you a little booklet on the specific critter that you bought. In my case, water bears! you got to love water bears. And uh, the second thing I wanted to say is... Um, Thanks, Polymaster. Polymaster, you know, makes my radiation detection device my Polymaster detector. They sent me a nice Christmas card. Look at that. Thank you, Polymaster. Actually, it's like, it's really nice. It's all beveled and everything sticking out like that. And you open it up and it says, Sincerest wishes for hope, happiness, and peace during this holiday season. And to the coming year, Polymaster Incorporated. And I think that's, uh, I forgot his name. I think that's the guy in charge. Um, looks like he actually signed it, too. But, um, I don't, I can't read it very well, so that's okay. I'm always terrible with this sort of thing, anyway. Nice! So thank you, Polymaster, and thank you, Carolina Biolog Biological, and all my other favorite companies to deal with. This has been Tom from Anti-Proton.com, and let me know if you have any interesting ideas, suggestions, questions whatsoever, and, um, dub bears!